The Syrians in Beirut call themselves observers, but they're a lot more than that, and they've got the muscle to prove it. 200 elite Syrian troops are providing the backbone for 500 Muslim Lebanese soldiers being deployed in the city's Shiite-dominated southern suburbs. Shiite Amal leader Nabih Berri told his militiamen either to stay off the streets or not carry weapons to help the operation go smoothly. The Syrian move into the southern suburbs is part of their plan to end the militia's 27-month reign on the streets. What the Syrians want is slowly but surely to extend a new order with the help of the dominant Amal movement and eventually get a return to some sort of normality in the Muslim part of the city. The process will be slow. Every block has to be negotiated with one faction or another. In one district, neither Syrians nor Lebanese have yet been deployed and are unlikely to be for some time to come. That's because the fundamentalist Hezbollah are in control there and they're none too keen on the Syrian plan. The explosion shook the Muslim West Beirut shopping district at mid-morning. The toll, 17 dead and 83 wounded. The driver of the car was said to be a young blonde woman. It's not known if she was among the dead. The first two floors of a seven-story apartment building were destroyed along with 12 ground floor shots. Firefighters took two hours to put down the ensuing blaze as rescuers dug out victims from the rubble. In a flash, 20 cars had been reduced to piles of twisted metal, bodies scattered across the street. Almost a year ago, another car bomb exploded in this street. Then, 93 died and 225 were wounded. Today's attack is the third in the past two weeks. So far, 66 have died and 300 have been wounded. Now, Christian East Beirut waits anxiously for tomorrow and possible retaliation. Running battles kept most residents of Christian East Beirut off the streets. Those who ventured out were stopped and checked by militiamen from the rival factions. The Christian sector was virtually sealed off as the rebels attacked forces loyal to Samir Jaja, the anti-Syrian militant who overthrew the pro-Syrian Eli Habaika in January. Jaja was reported to have fled East Beirut, effectively leaving the leadership open. In Muslim West Beirut, Islamic Jihad issued a statement about the hostages it's holding. Jihad also released a picture of David Jacobson, kidnapped from the American University Hospital. Referring to the US administration as the Great Satan, Jihad said those who want to resolve the hostage problem already know what they have to do. Jihad promised it would issue a statement from the hostages themselves, directed to the American people. The attack only lasted seven minutes, but the destruction in the camps was extensive. The bombing began at half past three in the afternoon, and when it was over, six civilians lay injured. Israeli gunboats were seen patrolling off Sidon's Mediterranean coast as the plane struck, engulfing the Ain El Hilway and Mie Mie camps in huge balls of flame and smoke. The Israelis are said to have used four jets and five helicopters to strike the two Palestinian refugee camps. It was the sixth air attack inside Lebanon by Israel this year. Two of the demolished buildings were claimed by Israeli military sources to be bases for the Palestine Liberation Organization in the guise of Chairman Yasser Arafat's mainstream Fatah guerrilla group. A third building is thought to have belonged to the Syrian-backed Abu Musa faction, which has broken away from the Fatah mainstream. None of the guerrillas were said to have been injured in the raid.
they fired anti-aircraft guns as the jets dive-bombed their targets and gunships unleashed a rocket barrage. The attack is the first by Israel since mid-July. It's thought to have been in retaliation for an incident earlier in the day involving the Israeli-backed South Lebanon army. Such attacks and counter-attacks are not new, and nothing about today's raid suggests an end to them. Thank <laughs> you. 